Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat. And today's video is going to be on how to make a chamfer. Uh, I get a lot of requests on YouTube, people asking me, hey, how do you do that? Because there's not an actual canned cycle to make a chamfer. In reality, there is. Any of the cycles can make a chamfer. It's just a matter of outthinking the machine a little bit. So what I'm gonna show you here today is I've got a three by three inch block and I just wanna cut about a 15,000th chamfer around the outside of it. So the way that I'm going to do that is I start out by just doing a rectangular profile here. And in the rectangular profile, I'm telling it that one corner is a negative inch and a half both directions, and the other corner is a positive inch and a half both directions because zero's in the center. I've got my Z rapid set at 50 thousandths above, and my Z end I set at 115 thousandths. So let me explain to you why that is, right? If I'm using a 90 degree chamfer tool, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna offset the tool by 100 thousandths. So therefore, if I bring the Z down to 100 thousandths, that's just gonna make it where the chamfer is touching the corner of the part. So if I go an additional 15 thousandths deeper, that's where my 15 thousandths chamfer is going to come from, okay? So that's the reason I have 115 thousandths in there. I'm telling it I'm gonna cut it clockwise, with the tool on the left, which means I'm gonna climb mill the outside when I chamfer it. My depth of pass is not really important in here as long as it's larger than how deep I'm actually going. Uh, I'm not putting a finish cut on here. I've just got my RPM at 3,500 and my feed rate's at 20. Okay, so now here's the important part. When I go to the tool table, I'm gonna set up my countersink tool here. And my countersink that I have in the spindle is a 3 8 90 degree countersink. But in order to make it do what I want it to do, I'm going to lie to it a little bit. And I'm gonna put in here a negative 0.175. So in retrospect, what I'm doing is I'm making that 3 ace cutter, I'm making the machine think that it's actually 200 thousandths in diameter, right? By putting that negative in there. So what's gonna happen then is when I go to cut the part, it's going to move over 100 thousandths because half of that 200 thousandths tool then it's gonna come down 115 thousandths, which is gonna be right on the edge of the part at the 15 thousandths size for the chamfer. And then when I push go, it's just gonna cut around the outside and it'll be done. Okay, so it's as simple as that. It doesn't matter whether you're doing inside work, outside work, any kind of a profile or milling or arc event will work this way. You just have to outthink the tool a little bit. And by the way, if you have an older prototrack before the RX series, then you might have to just lie to the actual diameter of the tool because you won't have a modifier in there to take care of it. But either way, you're doing the same thing. So initially, the machine thinks it's a 200 thousandths uh, diameter tool, and it's gonna cut a 15 thousandths chamfer around the outside. So here, I'm gonna show you how it works. Are you ready? Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna cut the part so you can see exactly how it's going to work. But remember the two most important things, right? I have to have a tool offset and then I have to either lie to the diameter or modify the diameter to adjust the tool so that it doesn't cut at the tip or at the full base of the tool. I'm trying to catch the middle of that 90 degrees, right? So here's my, here's my rectangle and I've already set up my tool, right? Here it is, everything looks good. I've got my modifier in there and I'm just gonna switch and go over to run mode. And then in run mode, I'm gonna push start, wait till it processes. It's gonna tell me when you're ready, push go. It just goes home. In this case, it's already there. It reminds me what tools should be in there. It reminds me to turn on the spindle. And then of course, it gives me the option of using tracking or CNC run. I highly recommend when you're trying to figure out whether you got this at the right height in the right place, tracking's wonderful because if it looks wrong, you're not gonna junk the part. You can go backwards and make an adjustment. So I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna go to tracking. And you're gonna see that as I come over here, I'm gonna come down just to the part and you'll see right there that I'm right into the part and I'm ready to cut that chamfer. And I could actually do this whole thing by using the tracking, right? But I'm gonna let it run by itself. So I'm just gonna back it up, hit stop, CNC run, go, let it do the chamfer by itself.
Okay, and that's it. As you can tell, super simple, right? I would highly recommend if you haven't done this in the past and you're trying to figure out how deep do you go compared to your diameter and everything, just start out with them equal. If the tool's offset by 100, come down 100. It shouldn't cut anything. And then as you adjust your depth, it'll start to cut and you can get your chamfer size directly into what you want it to be. Pretty simple, but at least now you know how to do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. As always, remember to keep on trekking.